Harbour Management Advisory Committee on the 29th of July. Um, before we need to get going, I need to do a few house, house, house meeting rules. Um, I just like to remind everyone that nine relief requirements. This meeting is being held face to face, but members and the public can join online and participate at the meeting. And it's only cast as president that are taking decisions at the meeting. Officers in attendance are there, there to provide sure. advice to the council. Yeah. And also advise that papers and the agenda be published on the council's website on Friday, the 19th of July, 2024. This meeting will be live webcast and the council will be making an audio recording of the meeting and this will be published on the council's website in due course. And just also, there's no planned fire drill today, but in the event of the fire, we'll all go out together down into the car park, okay? Um, I just like to uh, remind members, uh, if people would like to speak in the room, could you just please raise your hand and, uh, and we'll get you to answer <coughs> that question. Also, people on online, if you can uh, use the raise hand facility, or if you can't find it, just sort of wave, it, wave you know, on the screen so we can uh, get people to come in with a question. And also, um, can we make sure that, we, that when we do the, obviously the questions, that we, we go come through the chat? Okay, and uh, just please say your name before speaking so that you can get picked up on, on the, <coughs> get picked up on the recording. Okay. But before we actually start off on the agenda, I'd like to do uh, is do some, some introductions. Um, obviously, because this is the first time we've had the meeting where we've got our independent members as well. So what I'd like to do, we we'll go around the room. I we'll start off with you, Lee. We just sort of introduce who you are um, so, so for the benefit of everybody. That member, Councillor Lee Weber, Brent Bridgewater, Northern Central Division over Bridgewater, and I'm also sitting on Bridgewater Town Council. Right. And Neil, would you like to say, and let's like, like say just a little bit about yourself, just to give an introduction. Good afternoon. My name is Neil Adams. I'm one of the co opted members of, of this committee. Uh, I'm retired. Prior to retirement, I was uh, an internal auditor for a large IT company. And yeah, not the You're person you want well, to turning up in a, <laughs> on your doorstep on a Monday uh, morning. Uh, I sail a yacht and uh, Right. Glad to be here. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, Nick Dunsby, uh, another uh, independent member of the committee. Uh, my background is Navy, uh, 35 years plus in the Royal Navy, plus some time in the Australian Navy. Uh, since leaving then, I started my own uh, consultancy business, providing support, maintenance, defence, but around uh, safety management, infrastructure, and maintenance requirements as well. Thank you, Nicky. Sure. My name's Stuart. I'm uh, also an ex-Navy and ex-teacher. I now work for Southwest Maritime Academy, teaching people to drive boats safely. Ish. Excellent, thank you. Um, Councillor Rosemary Woods. I'm a member for the Watch of Mr Gersey Division, um, which goes all the way up. Obviously, I'm Anderson on the chair of the division within the council. I'm Je Captain Jessica Tyson, and I'm the acting cover master for Bridgewater Minehead Watch It and sort of Bridgewater Docks. And we've got Josh, who's our Democratic Service Officer, who's going to keep us on straight and narrow. And then Hi, I'm, I'm Marcus Cravis. I'm Councillor for Dunstan Division. I'm also a member of Minehead Town Council. And after hearing those introductions being slightly underqualified, I have owned a couple of boats and got my level one thing. thing but, um, the going straight stop me from going any further that day. Um, but yeah, nice to meet you. Excellent. Claire? Hi, I'm Claire Sully. I'm a member for Lend It South, but I, I've spent um, eight or nine months in the Bridgewater constituency, So, and then I was asked to be on this committee. So, uh, so. Lovely. Great. Thanks, everyone, for that. That's great. So we'll move on to the agenda. Um, we've got um, agenda item one, apologies for absence. Josh, do we have any apologies? Uh, no apologies, Chandler. You do. Um, yeah. Andrew Hadley. Oh, Andy Hadley. Sorry, yeah, yes. he's online then. Oh, is he online? Oh, great to see if you're online, Andy. That's great. Because Andy was meant to be obviously be here in place today, but couldn't um, make it today in person. That's lovely. Okay, we'll go to agenda item two. We've got the minutes of the previous meeting, which was held on the 18th of March. Uh, if you all have a chance to look at it, and you have to decide those minutes as true and correct. 
of the meeting. Yes, Chair. Thank you. Do I have a second to third? Yep, thank you, Rosemary. So that, that's great. I can sign those in due course. Um, we go on to agenda item three, which is the declarations of interest. Obviously, we've got the new declarations of interest, which uh, when we've got people, uh, councillors of town, parish councillors, which others. Do any members have any other any other declarations they feel they wish to, to to state today? No, that's what I was hoping for. That's great. It's agenda item three. Right, so we'll move on to agenda item four, which is the public questions. Um, we have two public questions. Uh, we have uh, one from Debbie Allen about to do with fees and charges, and I believe that I believe that Councillor Hadley was going to read it, but I believe that jo Andrew, do you, are you do you want to read it or do you want Josh to do it? I want Andrew. Josh to do it if you would, please. That's lovely. That's fine. Just just the Thank you. So, yeah, this question, as I said, is Debbie Allen. It's going to be read by Councillor Andy Hadley, but obviously he's online today, so I'll read it instead. So, Acting Hardmaster Jessica Tyson states in today's agenda there was some initial upset in regards to dues set in April, but dialogue continues and the vast majority of users appear to now be content. Dialogue or use of the harbour does not continue for our Help Harbour charity. Mindhead Sailing Club was told in writing that there is no further discussion on fees by Dave Coles. We offered a 66% interest in Slipway in order that we could continue to run the non-for-profit community harbour charity that has been on the harbour for 66 years. This was rejected. Our charity remains closed. No one here in the harbour is content or getting any dialogue. Burnham on Sea Boat Club under the same unitary authority pay £171 per year. We were prepared to match this. No one will explain why why we're not able to do so. We have contacted the Ombudsman over the unacceptable fee increases, for which no doubt we will receive criticism. In my opinion, we would not be acting with due diligence if we did not act to try and save a charity, and this cannot be used as an excuse not to have discussions or explanations to us. We were told by the Assistant Harbour Master that he and Jessica have been round all the South West checking the new fees checking the new fees were in line with other harbours. This cannot be true. I have done exactly that. Many don't change at all. Many don't charge at all for non-motorised activities. Lynmouth and Coombe Martin, for example, are free. We remain one of the most expensive slipways in the UK with the least facilities. Last Thursday lunchtime in Coombe Martin, there were 27 kayaks and paddleboards in use. I haven't seen that many in Minehead Harbour this year. Captain Tyson's statement demonstrates there is an apathy by the Harbour Authority about the dire situation in Minehead Harbour. This is great concern by locals and visitors that the chained off slipway and sea are either polluted or unsafe. One of our most important community assets, our once vibrant and interesting harbour, has been decimated. Our community charity offerings, our, communi our community charity offering sport, exercise and training has been closed for four months. There are three leisure boats on moorings with for sale boards and many empty moorings. One of our biggest commercial fishing vessels left the harbour forever this month. The cafes are empty, the car parks and harbour deserted, and all the charities' kayaks, small sailing boats, dinghies and paddle boards, rowing boats and other non-motorised equipment are dormant. The slipway is locked and angry people who have paid for access are on the phone trying to obtain codes to access their equipment, often without success. Will the Harbour Authority please commit today to urgently appeal to Somerset Council to reverse their disastrous decision to put the profit before people? Okay, thank you for that. We've got a um, reply from Jessica. Thank you. Okay, good, uh, good afternoon to everybody online and also uh, members in the room. Uh, we would comment as follows. Officers and the lead members previously offered to engage with the club. Following extensive correspondence with the club, it was proposed to introduce a specific club rate of £20 per year per kayak for club members, rather than the standard slipway fees being payable. This was communicated to them. We also reduced the daily launch fee for non-club members for a kayak to £10 and introduced a weekly launch fee of £40. 
The changes have been made to the fees and charges to reflect this. Minehead is a municipal port. The council, as the statutory harbour authority, stand by this proposal as a fair and proportionate means to operate the harbour. The response from the club has been to reject our position, challenge the legal process and the council's right as the statutory harbour authority to apply fees and charges. We have clarified legal authority and in response to this, we've been informed that the club intend to make a complaint to the local government ombudsman. It is felt that an external review would be appropriate as the club have not been prepared to accept the council's position as the statutory harbour authority. I would also like to take this opportunity to put on record that the staff at Minehead Harbour have, in the execution of their duties, dealt with verbal abuse and unacceptable behaviour from some people, that it was felt necessary to call the police to report it. Despite this, we continue to look to have positive and constructive actions with all in maintaining and improving Minehead Harbour moving forward. It's therefore appropriate for this review to take place, for the council and the club to take stock of the outcomes before further engagement. In regard to the lock slipway, this was introduced to better control unauthorised access to manage the harbour, particularly after the Minehead Sailing and Water Sports Club raised concerns about unauthorised access. The slipway is not closed, but has a managed access. This has led to better control of access and reduced un unauthorised use of slipway and ensures appropriate use of harbour facilities. Rescue services such as the RNI have access as needed to use the slipway. And access is granted to the members of the public on the payment of appropriate fees. In regards to moorings, there is a current waiting list for leisure moorings at Minehead. These are offered as they become available. Additionally, there are several visitors' moorings which are used for visiting craft as required. In any harbour, there is a turnover of vessel ownership, so there will always be for sale signs on vessels. People's circumstances change. In reference to the large commercial vessel leaving the harbour, we presume this is meant to orca. This is due to depart the harbour by the end of the month, I believe tomorrow or today, tomorrow I believe, having been sold by the estate of the owner who sadly and unexpectedly died earlier in the year. The aim of the Harbour Authority is to maintain and improve Minehead Harbour in line with statutory regulations and guidelines from the government. We will continue to pursue that goal. Thank you. Thank you for that, Jessica. Um, obviously, we'll give a, a full written response uh, to Debbie Cullen. And we have next question is Alan Dyer. Would you, would you like to just kind of say that yeah. we had a pick, it, pick up then from the, the microphones in the centre? When you're ready, sir. Yeah, well, I speak to somebody who's had a morning in, in Mine Harbour for 25 years. In April this year, launching fees on the Minehead Slipway were increased significantly. In addition, a new charge for launching the tenders of those already paying for moorings was introduced. The tender is a small rowing boat, essential to access a floating boat in the mooring. I've paid for mooring the harbour for 25 years, but have never been asked to pay extra to access my boat when it is floating. This came out of the blue, and I know the captain, Jessica here, told me I should have foreseen this. There is no way I could have foreseen that. You told me that at the last stakeholder meeting. Um, in addition, a huge increase was made in kayak launching fees, completely out of proportion to what was paid before. To quote from the Harbour Authority minutes, it was considered important by the incoming Harbour Authority that there was stakeholder engagement. If engagement is to mean anything, contact with stakeholders must take place in advance of introducing changes of such magnitude. Significant changes should not be presented to stakeholders at fait accompli. Why was there no prior consultation to such significant change? Why was the stakeholder meeting held after the introduction of the new changes? In the same minutes, it is asserted that the vast majority of harbour users appear to be content. Where is the evidence for this? It is not evident to me, and there is significant evidence to contrary, and that users are unhappy. Yes. I have it on good authority, all the commercial fishermen are unhappy. They are not content. There are 39 members of the Water Sports and Sailing Club who dispute the charges and are not going on the water until the situation is resolved. They are not content. We used to have 67 
But we've lost 26 members because of this. They're not content. Parents and children faced with a padlock chain when arriving at the slipway to go crabbing. They are not content. The hunt is on to find anybody in the harbour who is content. Given the importance of a true understanding of relationship in the harbour, will the committee treat with scepticism this assertion about the word content? Will it take steps to find out how harbour users really feel? It will not be, as Jessica Tyson said, that they will find people are content. People are very dissatisfied. Thank you. OK, thank you. Yes, okay. we want to respond. Uh, yeah, good afternoon again. Um, I'm going to, I based it on the uh, question that was presented. Um, I'm not clear what the Harbour Authority Group refers to and believe that Mr Dyer is referring to the stakeholders meeting that he attended, Minehead Stakeholders Forum. To answer the question, the revised fees and charges went through the appropriate pro approval process at Somerset Council. This has included passing through various council committees, including final sign-off by full council, where details were published on the council's internet site. Therefore, all elected members who represent their communities and stakeholders would have had access and could have raised questions about the increases. As a result of feedback from stakeholders and users, we reduced the tender fee for leisure users to £128. In regards to the level of contentment, the majority of users have paid the fees and charges without any objections, and it has only been a small minority of users that continue to raise big issues. Incoming public users also have paid without issue. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, we'll obviously give a, a written response also to that as well. Sure. Yeah. Can I? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. I mean, because obviously there's no agenda item for this. No. Um, it's so I presume we can't. Uh, it's not really public, not really, Marcus, because it's public questions and there's an answer. We've not really met to open yeah. up a debate. No, that's right, I just wanted to check. This. Yeah. But there is the work programme. In... On the work programme yeah. later on. Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah. Okay, lovely. Thank you, Marcus. Okay, right. Um, go move on to agenda item five now, which is the new thing on the role with the Harbour Management Advisory Committee. And I'll pass over to Jessica. Good God. Okay, briefing the Harbour Management Committee role. Uh, the role of the Harbour Management Advisory Committee is part of the governance of the harbours and ports as per the Port Marine Safety Code and the detail which is found in the Ports Good Governance Guidance. However, the harbour master, as per the Port Marine Safety Code, has day-to-day -day responsibility for managing the safe operation and navigation and other marine activities in the harbour and its approaches. In the Port's Good Governance Guide, uh, Part C, this particularly relates to the local authority-run harbours and ports. And in this, the guidance for the local authority-owned ports introduction states um, the guidance in Part A of this document applies to all statutory harbour authorities, including those owned by local authorities. This part provides more detailed guidance for local authority-owned ports, and in particular on aspects of governance, harbour management committees, and a range of other issues, including financial matters and business planning. This reflects the statutory harbour authority's position as part of a wider public sector organisation, i.e. the relevant local authority. Local authority owned ports should therefore read this part of the good governance guidance in conjunction with the guidance to all statutory harbour authorities. Local authority owned ports should seek and act to act in accordance with guidance in that part where applicable. It is strongly recommended that all committee members of the Harbour Management Advisory Committee make themselves aware of Part A and Part C of the Port Good Governance Guide in particular. The relationship between the Harbour Management Advisory Committee and the executive duty holders is clearly set out in the Memorandum of Understanding, which is to be ratified at this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Jessica from, from any of the members here on the um, role of the Harbour Management Advisory Committee? 
Everyone's clear? Yeah, if it's clear. Sure, sure. Thank you, Lee. Yes. So it was just a, it was just double checking. This is just to note. Well, it is really, yes. Yeah. I was happy to take any questions if anyone wants to ask it, but we'll note it as that's what we're asked to do in this report. So, when, so lovely. So, Christine. Lovely. Christine. Christine Lawrence, would you like to come in? Good afternoon. Is it possible that at the end of the month, which it is almost, um, we could have some figures as to the amount of usage of the harbour that has gone on through May, June and July? Because I live very close to the harbour and I've seen hardly anybody going out at weekends, hardly anybody going out between five and seven in the evening. And we've had some lovely, lovely evenings. And I'm very concerned that usage of the harbour has severely dropped this year. Um, not specifically, no. But um, I can certainly show what the um, what the, the income's been. Well, the only way to do that, Christine, we could look at what the income's been this year compared to like last year, because yes. we don't keep we don't yes. keep because yes. if someone uh, has a license or permit for you know for all year, it doesn't actually trigger anywhere. When you know what days they go out and they go out weekends, or evenings, or what have you, Rosemary. I wonder if we've got any of those figures for this year or last year. We'll have the income figures because obviously. Yeah, what about last year? We'll have the income figures of the last year from, from Watch at Harbour, won't we? We should be able to find yeah, that. Yeah, we'll point of order. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Yes. I think we're swaying in a bit for we the are, item. We are. This is not actually part of this item. Suggest that Shall I leave then? Stop asking to leave. No. He's, what Lee's quite rightly saying, we're talking about the Harbour Management Advisory Committee, the briefing role of the management. It's not to do about Watch It Harbour, okay? If that makes sense. I haven't moved on to that yet, but if you wish me to. I will. What do you mean? You just asked me. Yeah. I wasn't on about Watch It Harbour, and I still hadn't moved on oh, to right, that sorry. yet. Okay, thank you. No, we'll, we'll, we'll just let me finish. What we'll do, we'll look at the, the figures in terms of what, um, what was asked compared last year to this year and that we can only look at it by based on what the income has come into the council to see any sort of up or down uh, usage. Rosemary, what would you like to say? Well, I was only going to say when we look in later on, we'll be looking at agenda items for next time. Can we then look at Watch It Harbour? Because we're not going to do it now, are we? No, like Marcus said earlier, we can then put it onto the forward plan. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Yes. Lovely, yes. thank you. Okay. There's, if there's no other questions on agenda, agenda five, we'll note it and I'll move on to agenda item six. Okay, right. Agenda item six is the Memorandum of Understanding, pages 17 to 44, and I'll hand over to Jessica. Okay, um, right. So, to give you a brief understanding about the drafting and the reasons of the memorandum of understanding for the Harbour Management Advisory Committee. So, following uh, Full Council in December 2023, the report highlighted a number of drafting amendments to the Memorandum of Understanding. The purpose of the Memorandum of Understanding is to set out the working relationship between the Somerset Council Executive and the Somerset Council Harbour Management Advisory Committee. The drafting amendments include administration changes, uh, including council addresses. Previously agreed terms of reference have been added to the document along with an organisational chart. Uh, and included missing references to specific sections of the Council's constitution have been added. Drafting amendments is in no way changed the operation of the Harbour Management Advisory Committee, including its role as an advisory body to the executive. So the recommendations is that the Harbour Management Advisory Committee is asked to note the memorandum of understanding to include drafting amendments. And the reason for this is so that we can agree the understanding between the committee and the executive executive to articulate the governance arrangements for the committee. I think that's pretty much it, unless you want me to. No, so that's thank, no, thank you very much for that, Jessica, that's excellent. Now, because this was called originally to our first meeting, whereby I think um, Lee had a few points uh, in the memorandum of understanding and a few others did, it needed a bit more clarity. So it's obviously come back today 
and obviously um, it's a document now that can uh, hopefully soon go forward and to be signed. Obviously, it's a legal document, the memorandum of understanding. It's got to be dated. It's got to be signed by the, the uh, leader of the council and myself. So it's, it just basically breaks down. Um, if you look, if you look through it, it basically breaks down like the way we look at the governance of it uh, and uh, the purpose of the memorandum. And it looks about the, the Port Good Governance Guide and about how us as um, a committee will work, how many councillors and how many people we've got from the uh, independent members. So it's, it's, it's basically getting all our, our, our ducks in a row and hopefully, um, you know, we'll get this done soon and it will be technically uh, implemented. Does anybody have any questions about this document? It's more really for noting, but happy to take any questions if anybody wants any clarity on anything. Right, you've got one. Mandy. Welcome, Mandy. How's good the afternoon. chill got? Right. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair. Just a quick question, please. So I obviously the memorandum understanding was approved at full council in December 24, 2024. We've got some minor amendments. Um, it would have been really helpful to have them annotated. I've been through and it's really difficult to compare one document with another to see exactly which bits have been amended. And it was just a question really is as it's approved by full council, is it OK then to make amendments to it without returning it to full council? Because normally any policy or similar would go back if needed. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that, Mandy. My, my, my memory's correct from March. It was just some little technical little bits and pieces within the document. It wasn't actually changing the policies anywhere. It was um it was just changing the odd line here and there or you know I can't actually remember exactly all the little points, but it was just a tidying up exercise that put a few of us cancers to spot a few little things so we thought we'd get it changed and brought back to this meeting. But I um without going, I don't know if we create if we kept any minutes of what was changed do we do we know Josh uh, um, from the back from the previous meeting what what we changed? I can have a look. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have a look, Mandy, and see if we can find out what the actual but but actually the actual um, meeting was obviously it wasn't December twenty fourth. We haven't actually got there yet. It was December twenty three. Obviously, yes. there's, there's a typo on page eight. It is. Yes, it's it is. A, but it's good to know, Mandy, that you're reading the reports and, and you're <laughs> spotting the mistakes. As, uh, as always, I should say, thank you very much. Sir. But we'll have a look back in a minute, see if we can find out what the actual in-track um, changes were. But I think there was, there was only just a few. Um, and it was actually, as I say, changing the overall, um, what was agreed by full council. It was, just, it was more uh, smaller nuances. But we'll okay. have a look. It's just, it's just checking you've got the authority to do so because it was approved by a full council. So yes, my understanding yeah. was even minor changes should go back through full council, but I'll leave that with you, Chair. Right. OK, thank you. Thank you very much for that, Mandy. Thank you. OK, so can't see anybody raising any questions for agenda item six. So thank you, Jessica, for that. We'll move on then to agenda item number seven which is the update from Harbour Master. Thank you. Right, so um, I'm just going to give a general overview and then I'll do um, a bit on the specifics um, or some of the bits to do with it. So um, so once we had the formation of the Unitary Authority, um, you had, uh, we have Bridgewater, Minehead, Watchit and potentially Bridgewater Dock, which will have to come underneath the Statue Harbour Authority, which is Somerset Council now. This is currently under a memorandum of understanding until the necessary harbour revision order is uh, commenced. This will bring all the legislation and the bylaws for all the ports managed by Somerset Council up to date and be more relevant and fit for purpose in the future once completed. So in Bridgewater, there has been an uplift in shipping in the port, mainly at Cummich Wharf, with the occasional call at Dunball. This is set to continue until the end of the year and beyond. Pilotage services are being future-proofed with the training of additional pilots. Navigational aids, we've got some upgrading and improvement to the current nav aids to again future-proof the system uh, and the biannual maintenance inspection and lift of all buoys is to be scheduled, shortly scheduled and will look to be done before the winter. Number one buoy and the associated gear was lost a couple of months ago and in the process of renewal, which would hope to again be done in time for the biannual inspection for deployment for economic um, efficiency. 
Um, we had hoped that it would be retrieved by somebody, but to date, nobody's come forward saying that they've got our boy. We're also looking to take some uh, steps in regards to some dredging around the entrance to the brew to ensure the continued safe entry and egress from the River Brew by the pilot boat, um, as well as other users. With the lease of Dumble Water Aggregate coming up, the renewal, serious consideration needs to be given to take it up as it will provide water frontage that we can control, as well as an area for lay down, which will benefit um, the port and Somerset Council as a statutory harbour authority for the upcoming Bridgewater Tidal Barrier build and also the start of the gravity project at Puriton, which is only some 10 minutes away from the wharves. Minehead. Um, ongoing work in regards to improving the management of the harbour overall is, is, is happening. Um, it, has, it has provided um, a better revenue return, in particular in regards to the use of the slipway and the reduction of launch without payment incidents. The communications, from my personal point of view, have improved with the users um, and we've certainly felt that they've been actively engaging. There have been several there have been several visits from visiting yachts so far and also the return of the Waverley. We're also looking at grants for improvements of the facilities being explored in regards to the commercial fishing boats, which would also benefit all the users of the harbour. Um, I will say uh, that I, I do go down to the harbour and I speak with users, not all users, but certainly users come and approach me. And I've had several decent dialogues with people and most people appear to be reasonably understanding about what is happening. Um, I know there are some that feel that's not the case. In Watch It, there is, uh, we're still looking for the completion of the new lease for the marina. It's still outstanding, but I'm assured, having looked for an update before this meeting, that it is imminent. Um, we continue to have a good dialogue with the marina manager and we'll be looking to work as collaboratively as possible and as practical in the interest of the harbour overall. Dredging of the harbour of the outer harbour is also shortly to be looked to um, put out to tender. We have had some commercial traffic to the West Pier and we'll look to encourage this, but obviously it'll be aided once the dredging is completed. Bridgewater Docks, it's not directly in our remit as such, but we understand that it's moving forward. And again, we'd look to create um, good communications with Bridgewater Town Council, who is it understood will be managing it once it's moving forward. I'm sure Mr. Councillor Redman will correct me if that's in, but not the case. So overall, we do continue to try uh, and to maintain and improve all the ports in line with the Port Marine Safety Code and would hope that the outlook is positive as we strive to make the ports become self-sufficient and community assets and community assets with a viable future for all with a very limited resources and manpower. The business plan and the strategy uh, will be key to this aspiration. So on a personal note, um, I can only speak um, that I, you know, I've actually been taking calls this morning from local people down at Minehead and local people down at Watch It who have, will and do help in many regards because they feed back information on a daily basis as well as looking for um, codes, um, etc. So I would personally, I believe that there is still decent dialogue with people and the users, um, despite what is being uh, that has been said, everybody is entitled to their point of view. But it does take time to get harbours going and ports going and people never do like change. So, you know, we're very appreciative of the support that we do get, but we can also understand the concerns of the people that find this more challenging. So we will still continue to act in a, in a positive manner uh, in, in the hope of um, engaging all the users, not just some of them. Thank you very much, Francesca. The first question I've got is Rosamund. Yeah. Um, you said it was that the dredging of the watch at Harbour was imminent. Do you have any dates for that or any time scale? And I'm really talking about the outer harbour. But of course, also, I'm worried about the lease of the marina. And do you have any time scale for that? Right. Uh, Councillor um, the information that I have in relation to the dredging of the outer harbour is that obviously we've had to wait for um, the qualif qualification that we had the funding to go ahead. 
I then have to put out for tenders, which um, I had intended to try and do at a much earlier point. But unfortunately, we've had um, other matters that have taken precedent, uh, both in my head and watch it. So, um, but the aim would be to try and get uh, those out very shortly and have it done before we get to the winter time. So obviously, that will improve things. We're also having, we've started having some conversations with the marina so that we can potentially try and liaise the outer harbour and the inner harbour dredging if that is beginning to, if that is likely to happen, um, so that we can be as effective as possible in, in uh, what the actual outcome is for that. In regards to the actual lease itself, uh, unfortunately, I'm not particularly party to that, other than the fact that I have the dialogue with the marine manager, who seems to be on a much more upbeat um, tempo in the last few weeks. Um, so I would like to hope, and I'm informed by um, parts of the council that are dealing with this, um, that it is imminent, um, that that has been imminent the last 18 months, two years. So. I am trying to remain positive in that aspect because I think, um, obviously, it would be a great, uh, we would all know where we were acting from if uh, once that lease is in place. Although, you know, um, there are different ways of looking at it. So that's as much as I think. Do you, do, you, do you have any idea about any conditions on that lease? There is a lease in abeyance at the moment. Um, there are some, some, um, I believe there are some, um, I'm not sure what the correct word is, some uh, particular conditions on it, uh, but obviously I'm not sure if I'm allowed to comment on that as we stand. So well, I will leave it there. Tempting, I think they call that. Okay. Are you happy with that? Any other? Well, not no? really, but... Okay, uh, right, we'll go to Marcus. Thank you. Okay, I was actually going to follow up on that one, because um, I assume um, how relevant is that lease to this committee, which I suspect it probably is, but then at that time, if it is relevant to this committee, how involved are we? Because what we what I'd be concerned about um, for the users of the harbour um, is that Somerset Council makes a decision based on financial issues, based on various other issues, and doesn't actually make a decision based on what's good for the users of the harbour. The boat owners, um, I'll bring it, I was going to bring up later, but I actually read the executive agenda yesterday morning and read the cultural strategy. Yeah. And um, which is quite interesting because um, it sort of touched on it. It touched on health and well-being and the use of the coast in the cultural strategy. Mm -hmm. So I just want to ensure that although there's virtual sensitivity, what I'd be very reluctant at, and bearing in mind, I think, bearing in mind the public speakers and other issues, is that decisions being made in County Hall without actually involving those who's maybe going to affect the most, I please show there's a financial and an asset issue, and actually in essence it is an asset issue that the council is dealing with, but the knock-on effect of that asset may may actually affect harbour users for the next 100 years. Is it well, true? That is true. It's too can, can I take the opportunity to remind um, councillors of the council plan, which actually says that we should have a coastal strategy for the harbours and West Somerset Coast should be celebrated and accessible to everyone as community engagement. I'm not quite sure we've got quite the wording right, but that was their plan. But is that not their plan now? Because it seems to be a matter of how much somebody can pay for it. Um. I don't know if that comes to me. I have to say I've not been party to the cultural strategy or the coastal strategy at this point, so I can't really comment. However, I would echo the fact that I think that what has been raised here is um, is 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 where my line of thinking would be in the sense that it, they are assets, but they also need to be um, celebrated and, and made to work. But that can only work in a certain manner. So I would I would agree with the councillors. So can, I, can I come back to you? Certainly. Certainly obviously, I pre, obviously, I appreciate this commercial sensitivity and how that gets dealt with, and whether this committee may not be going by the scope of benefits, yeah. may not be uh, able to see commercially sensitive information. But I know we have this old ding dong that as councillors on this committee, maybe maybe we could be 
consulted, but yeah. whether they'd okay. be worried yeah. about the um, whether they'd be worried about commercial sensitive information and things. Yes. People don't trust positive self counselors oh. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I can understand that, but I do, I do, I do think we should take him. Um, you know, genuinely really concerned, and I'm not a watcher. You know, I do in between watching mine. Um, but I'm genuinely concerned that if you, you know, there be a, a cock up happens, and then actually, rather than just deal with it, we will be trying to deal with it afterwards, and not deal with it now. Or maybe, you know, a bit of communication with my lead officers and lead members might yeah. not might be quite a useful thing. Yeah. What What I'll do, Mark, is I'll organise um, a meeting with the uh, officers in charge of watch it from a, from an it comes under like you might it's an asset comes under the assets uh, part of the team um, but, but it's to do with obviously under the, the regulatory and operational part of the council what we'll do we'll get a meeting so we can all have sight of what's actually happening um, because obviously I think it's crucial that from councillors' point of view to know what's happening if not until after it's been done the deal and then that obviously um, it could be um, deemed or viewed it's not what councillors or the community wanted so we must make sure that we get sort of buy-in I suppose so what I'll do I'll get a, a meeting in the diary Marcus if you're happy um, so we can ask these ask these questions and hopefully um, we can take it forward from there as a oh, Mandy Mandy you'd like to come in yeah, thank you. Sorry to be parochial. No, actually, I don't apologise. Just regarding the report here and reference mine had. Um, just wanted to pick up a couple of points that have been made. And the first was that most are happy, a few are not. I wish a few of you could have been at the town council annual meeting. There was a room full of very unhappy people. It wasn't one or two. There were a lot of unhappy people there. Um, and um, whilst I am reading that there might be some better re revenue returns, um, I think what you might find when you dig under the figures, if the figures match what I am seeing, there's a decreased usage, but higher income because you are charging so much more. Now, my concern and Councillor Hadley's concern, we raised a question at full council. We've asked for a review of the fees and charges because um, for me, if you've got less younger people in particular using it, understanding the water, it's really important that our young people are water savvy. And there's a lot of work that goes on around the harbour to encourage that, which I hope would be welcomed by all. Um, our, our further concerns were around the vibrancy, the offer, reduced footfall, less income, tourism, etc. So I hope that the uh, group will also consider, as well as the harbour, the impacts on jobs, tourism and all those surrounding issues. Um, and just to say again, we have asked for a review and also a meeting uh, with senior officers and exec member just so that they can understand the sort of current impact on the locality. So it's a broader issue um, and perhaps the few lines in the report for me doesn't fully reflect what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing. And I just hope that the uh, you can all take that on board today. Thank you. Thank you for that, Mandy. Um, I've got question of on May. Um, at the Dumball Wharf in the aggregate, what have you, and the Bridgewater Tidal Barrier and the Gravity Project, um, that could be potentially quite big for Somerset, obviously. Um, do you think that this is something we should put on the forward plan in the sense that we need to do a little bit of a study or feasibility on this? to take it forward um, um to, to, to i know we want to do a, a harbour business plan going forward but this is quite important and the timing now is probably critical critical to start getting it going whether we can right, do it in as a, a in separate that, feasibility yeah. well you could try and do a separate feasibility but in fact it's covered in the port feasibility study right. that was done by sedgemore district council um and um it was very clear that we needed to consider taking up that wharfage because it's currently under lease to um, Hanson's Aggregate, who will release that at the end of the year. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it was very clear in that yes. that that was going to provide us with a, an opportunity. Um, again, not just because it will improve the local, well, improve the local, it will probably bring jobs and things, uh, but it will also obviously assist in um, 
the port, it'll improve the port, the port will be used. So um, I don't know if another feasibility well, study is another feasibility, Probably what I'd call a refresh in terms of, because it was done, you say, 2019? It was done, actually, no, it was only done um, a couple of years back. I can provide the committee with what, that. What we could do is, because obviously the executive are, are, are busy people on the council, unless that we push things up towards them to notify them what's going on, they probably wouldn't be on their radar, if that's... Yeah. So I think what we could do from from this committee is to um, I can write a summary and write, 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 write a summary, and then we, I think if, if members of this committee are happy that we um, send it to to, to Councillor Revens. Obviously, he's through from the government side from us to the executive, um, expressing what we think that something should be looked into. Obviously, we're not we can't recommend consultants and expenses and stuff, but also an the executive they can decide how to take it forward. So that that would be a. I, I would I would agree with that yes. wholeheartedly. So we could actually also put it onto maybe our um, forward action plan because if we do it, then we want to get feedback to come back in. Just yes. ask, can I just ask a question on that? So you mentioned sure. the, mentioned the business plan. Yes. Would that not feed into that business plan? The this. Well, there was yeah yeah there was originally a business plan just for this um business, particularly just for this part was it? I. Uh, Right, so when we were in Sedgemore and before we became unitary, we had a port feasibility plan or port feasibility viability um, study undertaken. Part of that, part of the feedback that came back from that was the fact that for the port to continue to be able to, I suppose, be more meaningful yeah. um, as an asset, that they that they strongly advised that we got some sort of wolfage as well as um, obviously the economic benefits that then come with that. Um, in relation to a business plan, um, you know, obviously the aspiration would be to try and involve it as much as possible, but uh, there's never been a, a proper business plan other than the ones that I've uh, found in the in the archives and have tried to bring forward uh, on a personal level as the Deputy Yard Master. Um, so it is something that is really does need to be looked at seriously as for all the ports and also for that one in particular is is that requirement for um, swifter action than sometimes uh, some of the procedures allow um, for the ports. It's um, ports are dynamic, or ports and harbours are dynamic and um, sometimes quicker action needs to be taken rather than. Are you after that, Nicky, or do you want to supplement your question? Well, my name may just come back. To, okay, well, when is this likely to be? When the, is this likely to be? I understand. I would have to go and confirm, but I understand that the lease is due for renewal or comes up for um, take up at some point in this year, later on this year. I, I have contacts um, yeah. that I can probably determine when that is likely to be. Um, and we certainly have the owners, uh, the person who owns the, the wolf edge. Uh, we have his contact details. I'm very happy to go back to him and, and ask. Um, I did ask the question, I think, a couple of years back um, about how much it was likely to be. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, he seemed to be quite open for negotiations. Uh, so it is perhaps something to explore in a more meaningful way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions on this item, on the update? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. Your report. Thank you very much, for that, Jessica. Thank you. We'll move on to agenda item eight. Stake for the four and short meeting. Thank you. I think next time I'll have to get other people to read these things. Don't get bored of me, are they? Yeah. Anyway. It helps. I don't. I don't. I noticed that uh, the Jessica's going through the. Most of us have seen well, Okay, it. well, that's yeah. fine, in which case, um, I'm yeah. sorry. It saves you having to yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen to it all. No, 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 no. no. It, it, it saves you having to read it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, okay, I'm, I'm a little bit new to this, so forgive me. Um, the water, well, all the, all the stake or the users and the stakeholder groups, um, we do try and meet with them at least uh, for Burnham. It's about twice a year. Uh, there was one in March, and the next one's obviously in October. Um, they, you know, again, we have, we do have good dialogue, and we have a lot of uh, people that are very, very helpful towards the harbour and um, what we're trying to actually progress. 
Um, the Watch It Harbour Advisory Committee, we had one a week ago, um, which will presumably, uh, once the minutes are will come out and people will be able to see that. Um, and that was, again, I think the thing that came out of that, which may be pertinent at this point, was uh, looking at um, what assets the harbour was sit within the harbour jurisdictions for each of these ports and what income we are or are not getting. And one of the things that was raised at Watch It was the issue of car parking and the mm -hmm. fact that there were 35 car parking spaces that were with the marina, I believe, have been handed back. Um, there was some discussion and um, that, you know, an option would be to look at perhaps saying a percentage so that each part of the council gets something out of it. As the ports are supposed to be operating on a cost neutral basis, sometimes we're having stuff that's sitting there where we're getting little or no income from it, but we're expected to generate income from somewhere. And people don't like it when we have to try and raise income in it, well, not just for the, the maintenance, but for really for the maintenance rather than the improvement currently of all these ports. So that's perhaps something for um, the committee and members on the committee and the executive to consider moving forward is that we need to actually have an integrated um, coordination of various departments um, because sometimes actions are taken without actually understanding that there's other interested parties involved that may have a slightly different viewpoint on where it's going. Um, and I think that's probably historical more than anything else. Um, right, so, you know, you've seen a bit about the stakeholders group. Um, there are people that strongly disagree with this uh, in the general tenor, but um, honestly, as I say, from a personal point of view, having started um, having to sort of jump into my colleague's role, um, I go down to the ports and try and get down to the ports on a regular basis. Um, the last meeting was taken up entirely virtually with um, the financial, the charges issue. I do try and answer to the best of my ability. Uh, but I equally don't want to um, provide information that is not, is it hasn't got the correct backing or that or hasn't got the correct information with me at the time. I am uh, still learning about councils and how they operate. So, but from a statutory harbour authority point of view, from my job point of view, down in my head, I have conversations with people. Um, and I, I, in fact, was having a conversation with uh, one of the longer term boat owners um, and, and residents of, of Minehead. And um, he was very happy to discuss things and he raised some issues and we had the discussion and I felt that it was very positive. And, and I learned a lot as well. So I, I would dispute the fact that people are telling me that there is uh, this. Um, I can only go on what I find when I'm down there. In relation to um, Councillor Chilcock um, having saying that there was um, a lot of unhappiness at the Minehead Town Council, unfortunately, I didn't know that there was a town council meeting. Um, we do try and speak with all the people and the users down there when we're there. Um, so I can only say we are trying to do this, but we have very we do have a very small team of very limited resources. And if people continue to try and work against what they don't like, rather than trying to find a common path with us, it's going to be a very long haul. Nobody, you know, I appreciate, I do genuinely understand the, the upsets, but there are ways and means of making sure that we can find a common path through this, not through some of um, the actions that have been taken to date. So I would really kindly ask, that if people have genuine concerns, it's not to be, you know, realise that the underlying is that I want this harbour, this asset to work. So in doing that, and it does take longer than I would like, it takes a lot longer. If somebody wins the magic lottery ticket and can give me all the money, then we could get a lot more done. But we are slightly constrained by where we're at. So we are trying to make the most and the best as best we can. So any additional, um, you know, sort of positive or negative comments are always welcome. We only learn by these. So, um, but in the main, I actually feel that we're we're making more positive inroads. Um, I don't believe I'm that naive. I've been on ships for 18 and a half years. I've got a fairly good handle on reality. 
So um, I would suggest that, um, you know, things are very slowly and granted too slowly sometimes are happening uh, in all of these ports. Um, but we're always very happy to engage with people, whether it is positive or negative. So hopefully we can uh, move forward in a better frame. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Um, Mandy, I'm sure it's about online. Thanks for a second bite, uh, Chair, but I wasn't named. So uh, Captain Jessica will learn that if you name someone, they can come back and speak again. So thank you, Chair. Um, just, to, just to say, <laughs> it's just something that's councilish. Um, so just to say, and to be very, very clear, Andy and I are absolutely positive about the harbour. That's, it's an essential part of the town. Um, and it's really important, like we said, for all the users um, to for it to be a happy and buzzy place with an atmosphere. And that's what we all want. And when the harbour's working well, um, it is a great atmosphere and it's a great place to be and to spend time. We will work with you if we can in any way we can as local councillors to have the best outcome and for everybody is to be as happy as they can be um, and I think the only way that will happen as you say is, is with continued dialogue and openness and honesty and also um, to be respectful of each other and, and certainly Andy and I I know Andy it's not easy for Andy to speak uh, today but I can speak on his half confident behalf confidently to say we are both here we are both very supportive and we will work with you and with the council to try and find a positive way forward and I'm sure there is one thank you thank you for that Mandy that, that's great thank you and I'm sure um, we all well, they work together anyway, so that's great. Thank you. I've got the and then on Marcus. So, Lee. Thank you. It's just a clarification, really. The, the bodies that are named here, I just wondered what the constituted nature are copies of them. And so, uh, so uh, let me just so um, who who who's brought them together? In, 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 are, are oh, they okay? Um, the Burnham Water Users Forum is um is not run by us. We, we're invited as an attendee. Um, that was um, constituted a long time back before I ever turned up. The Watchard Harbour Advisory Committee is written into the Harbour Revision Order. So that is why that is. And so therefore we have to run it. And the Minehead Stakeholders Group is something that I reinstigated because of the, the, um, the, the fact that um, communications had somewhat broken down with the previous statutory Harbour Authority. And as I felt that was my where my comment came from, that I felt that it was important to engage with stakeholders. If you do not have a forum to bring in things to, particularly given um, sort of slightly spread out nature of uh, the council and also the harbour offices, um, it's very difficult for people to find someone to speak with. So that's one of the reasons why we started it again. Okay, so that was a good question, Lee. Thank you. I've got another one? Just, just, yeah, yeah. To follow up, really. Yeah. So you mentioned, mentioned just some minutes. And those minutes that are within our uh, ability to, to access, if they could be shared with the committee, that would be helpful. Is, yes. Sorry, you, which minutes are we speaking you know, about? You, you made reference of the, yeah, when the minutes we, become available. So well, they, the, 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 the water, uh, the, the Burnham Water Users, uh, Users Forum, they, they produced their minutes previous. Uh, the Watch It Harbour Advisory, I believe, are put up online because they're a legal requirement. And the Minehead Stakeholders Group is, um, it's usually me or somebody else trying to write them up. Um, and then we normally will bring them back like any meeting that you have and say, are you happy with those as a record? Um, you know, I'm not necessarily the, only the formal yeah. ones are I'm asking the question yeah. because obviously, right. the, 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 I mean, I'm asking the question purely because yeah, yeah. it would be useful yes. for us yeah. to be able to have a better bit of that. Uh, so I think it's good. Because yeah. I think once we do the website, Dave, we can probably have links to stakeholder engagement, or we could probably put a link to minutes instead of coming so someone's um, eventually. I will be guided by yeah, what the normal council protocol yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. If we're talking about the engagement. So, okay. Um, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, cool. Uh, well done for your visits to Minehead Harbour. Um, and I always, I always have a thing about officers and employees having to defend what protect their council's decisions. Um, and yeah, I think if we are, yeah, because you know, I see it time and time again. And um, you know, bottom line, maybe have to maybe we'll see look to the council agenda better. Um, but what I would say is if 
and well done for we 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 do in the Minehead Stakeholders Group as well. Thank because you. um I learned 20 30 years ago that I think we don't upset the people in the harbour. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but that's when I first ended up on the town council. What I was going to suggest was maybe the next stakeholders meeting, um, we invite all to get some political representation as well. Um, we're going to be portfolio holder. But, yeah. You know, not, not quite asking for the leader just yet, but uh, maybe the portfolio holder might be, might be a useful thing to do. And uh, I'd say no points about trying to make Minded Harbour work. And I suspect over the many years, um, I can't ever remember any more charging of being down there. Going back to the good old days of West Somerset Council, and I maybe they were meant to. Um, There's the problem. <laughs> There's the problem. And, and hence the problem, and that's what we're trying to solve. So, um, and I wonder whether, you know, that's a six month gap between meetings, is whether we can make that a more regular occurrence. So, not necessarily asking for course me, but maybe we should put a guide by now. Is there a sensible time to have it? And it couldn't be you have it to go and write up the minutes, um, if you see what I mean, and whether there could be. <laughs> That would be useful. Resource there and how we can find that. Yeah. Um, I would just come back on that in relation to the the the. Um, I agree that it would it might be useful to have uh, more meetings rather than than less. The problem is coordinating all the stakeholders to find the relevant thing, and eventually you just have to have a meeting so that you can get the people that are available to at least try and keep the dialogue going. Because the problem we've got is that. Obviously, you know, if you've got commercial fishermen, they're going to be out at certain points. If you've got people that have other jobs, they can't necessarily arrive on time. If there are, you know, if somebody's away on holiday or they have got a dentist appointment on, and you know, it's it's a bit like that. It's quite difficult to get everybody to pin down on a date, and you can spend a lot of time just trying to get a date fixed before you even start on uh, what you're actually going to talk about. Um, but as I say, this is really the reason for continuing and trying to get it going is so that people do have the capacity to exercise their right to disagree or, or bring something positive or suggest things with for their harbour, because that's what this is about in many ways. Um, it, it is difficult when the apparent authority appears to be looking as if we're trying to be countermand where they think things should go, but it there are certain rules, regulations and statutory requirements that have to be adhered to. And, and sometimes that you will butt up against that. But there is always a way through. So, um, as I say, we we'll look to try and accommodate as best we can. Right, thank you. Anybody else have a question? No? OK, thank you, Jessica. We'll note, note your report and we'll move on to agenda item nine, which is um, going to be a verbal update on which will for doctor development? Right. Well, I have to say I did look to get an update from uh, one of the project officers, um, but uh, unfortunately I haven't had any reply to date. Um, I, as far as I know, the the the, uh, the, the, the project was continuing, and um, perhaps Councillor Redmond might be able to uh, help on that fact from from Bridgewater Town Council. To be honest with you, I don't have um, an official update from, from anybody that's within the project team. So as far as I know, at this point in time, uh, it is still continuing to be progressed. Um, don't know if okay, anybody's got anything else. Do you have any Apologies. contacts in the sense that, because I know it's, is it, I think I might say it's about, going to be about a £5 million spend, I think, to, to do the project. So the, 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 to, one of the things I was going to suggest was actually that there's, this body might benefit from a briefing yes, we'll by the principals, yeah. but the 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 uh, it's off the top of my head. Yeah. But in in real terms, the the project is moving forward. The plans are moving forward. However, there's still issues between the council and the canals and river trust over legal agreements to be made yes. in relation to the docks itself. And until yeah. that has been concluded, then the project can go forward. Oh, well. What I would suggest so the the the, the first. Plans are being prepared and ready to go. Yeah. However, there is a minor yeah. inconvenience. It, it'll quite 
keep looking on what the plans are. And obviously, there's going to be obstacles of the way, but it's you know, what is the vision for the docks, what we want to do, what, what, what's the benefits, and that sort of thing. That's what we'd like to. Yeah, the, the best answer, the best thing yeah. to do would be to get a formal response to that. That could be circulated between yeah. now and the next meeting with an outline of what the town team and, yeah. and the development, and what the plans are. Yeah. But it'd be able to do better to have a face yeah. face brief. Yeah. For it. Absolutely. Yeah, can we get a name? I mean, who the yeah, best? Yeah, so I do that. Good, lovely. That. Thank, thanks, Lee. I don't Thank know. Brilliant. That's very okay. I didn't. I, I didn't understand what we were getting at. Yeah, yeah. Right. lovely. Thanks, Lee. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. No one's there. That's any questions on this? All right. So, um, thank you. We'll note. The brief update. That's yes. good. Thank you. Right, brief yeah. update. And we'll yeah. move on yeah. to. Oh, sorry. sorry. Just sorry. 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 So are you still waiting a brief update? And if you get it, can it be sent out with the minutes of this piece? Oh, yes. Yeah. I've looked to get one, so okay. I will face again uh, yeah. once I have a... If you'd like to, like to know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, uh, it's getting everybody up to speed, that's a good thing. Right, thanks. Absolutely. Right. right, agenda item 10, Harbour Masters update. The verbal update on the website. The website, right. The verbal update on the website is, is that it has been improved in the sense of uh, we now have the correct uh, numbers um, and... Um, information as far as I well, as far as I have checked and I do try and check reasonably regularly. Um, there is a better line of communication between the Harbour Authority and the IT department so they understand that when we need to put up notice to mariners uh, we need to be able to do it within you know pretty much within 24 hours plus. In relation to the actual improvements on the IT uh, and the web thing there is a young lady that we've started talking to but we've had to uh, facilitate the meeting so that we can um, look at how we want to make the website be a little more engaging and interactive and we have plenty of pictures as well as um, obviously information so if there were other parties in my head um, part of this would be to have um, say a page or a link to community-based groups that perhaps operate within the harbour that could then benefit from from that sort of thing. So that's a work in progress, but it is um, still on the horizon. OK, thank you very much for that update. OK, that brings us on to the last agenda item, number 11, the work programme. Right, so... Work programme, we've got on here... Just the date of the next meeting, which is the 28th of October. Um, so that budget setting, report to the executive to decide the budgets for harbour. So. I'm not too sure what we're going to be getting in sense because I would thought we might have had a bit of an input into the budget setting or from, from our point of view. Um, so I think we need to get a bit more clarity on that, um, what is required. I think also going forward on the work program, I think we need to, gosh, um, do it in, in a, more like the category, who's responsible, you know what I mean, the, the favour yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, so we, because obviously this is just our first one to kick, get, get the ball Yeah, no, I've got a template. Yeah, I've got to, so we're going to give a bit more information on the work programme. Um, so I think we, we need to look at that. Um, obviously, we've got the annual report, it says, but we need to think, like, when does it go to the executive? Because obviously, it says April 24th, it says, because to consider the draft report. Lee. Sorry, I was going to wait for you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The draft, and so obviously, um, when we do the... The template that will come more apparent on dates, times, yep. responsibilities, and stuff. And obviously, one of the, the key things that we're tasked as a committee to do is look at the Harvard, I call it Harvard Business Plan, and where, where we go forward. That needs to be on here because obviously, um, there's two things we've got to do under the uh, memorandum of understanding is, is the business plan. And also, there's another thing we haven't mentioned anything about today is environmental policy. That's one of the key things under the memorandum of understanding. So we need to put that environmental policy on them. What, what we obviously, what is our environmental policy and that how it impinges on each of the, the harbours and what have you. So I think that needs to go on there. Um, obviously, just when we're going to do the business plan, we probably might need to break it down into small chunks or more pieces, small pieces of work. Because obviously, if you try and do everything in one go, it might be such a mammoth job. It might be easy to do certain bits as we go along, like that said about the um, Dumble Wharf and yeah. what have you. So I think that probably needs to go on to the work programme, how we're going to advise the executive. I know you said we might do a summary 
of that report that was done because I think we need to flag it up to the executive that it's, it's a key thing that needs to be looked at now rather than yes. this, especially if the lease is coming up uh, for renewal shortly. Um, and also, I think maybe you can come, probably put some more about future meeting dates. Um, just really at the bottom of, the, of, of it, just to remind everybody. So I think the next meeting date is the 28th of October and it's going to be at 10 a.m., not 2 a.m. OK, and then one after that's the 20th of January, which will be at 2 p.m. again, and the 14th of April, which is 2 p.m. again. So we can probably put that yep. on the box just to remind you because we're all busy people and it's good to remind you when the dates and times are. That's just my initial thoughts on the work programme. Um, Lee, who wants to come in? No. You, you packed very tactfully picked off most of my list as you'll be going. Oh, right. Okay. This, we uh, think on the same name. Have, see? Say, yeah. All I was going to say was so you, you mentioned about the, uh, the Dun, Dunball Wharf. Lease. Yes. Yeah. That's something that we need to look at. Um, and the Harvard budget stakeholders. Yeah. So the, the bit that I was going to say, you, you mentioned the memorandum of understanding. One of the things that's become clear today yeah. is that there's lots of dates to con converging data. So I would suggest at some point we need to start considering the data, how we have it reported to us, and what bits of data we need. Because right. obviously, the, the, uh, as um, Jessica has indicated yeah. already, her team is very small. Yeah. And it, it and the requirements under the memorandum of understanding and also yeah. the better understanding of this whole body is for us to have be able to. I would suggest look at things on a year by year basis yeah. potentially so that we can have an understanding of how things are working that's right yeah and be able to comment yeah. on that so one of the things i think we need to be talking about was find a way to to have access to or or is data yeah absolutely i think yeah, that's key because um yes because nikki brought it up earlier about how we do compared to last year are things up or down we, we don't we don't know because we haven't even seen the we haven't seen the budget we don't see any figures so infographics which is really show like little bits of information we've got to show a picture i think we need to do something simple that shows a picture maybe you need to get some some key some key figures for us and we get reported at every meeting you know maybe what the the income is or the amount of users or, or whatever information and data because we none of us i don't think got a clear picture of is it up down or is it flat or you know so i think it's a very good point Lee. so so just to be clear so yeah. the, the, the the data that we need would help also uh, protect uh, our officers by yeah. reporting so that we can actually be, have an understanding of, of of how things are in factual basis yes. as opposed to my friend read on the internet that it was a little bit like this and yes. it becomes custom and practice so the more we can have data that's in a, in, a, in a robust format that we can evolve to help us yes. then the, the better it is because it, 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 yeah. I don't think it's We've all been in an environment where our next door neighbour told us that this was factual, and yes. it's very quickly becomes real time. What we need to be able to do is have data that we can look at, access, yeah. and be able to rely upon. Yeah, absolutely. I think, and um, we've just got to work out where we're going to get that data from. I suppose, Jessica. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, it's trying to coordinate. Um, obviously, because they all had three separate. Um, well, three yeah, separate, yeah. but because they had different statutory harbour authorities, it's then trying to access the archive and the history and then knowing who to get the information from because it's quite often has been delegated to different departments within that council that used to exist and uh, occasionally it gets lost in the ones of time. Yeah, if, if I could help, but I know we're, that we're actually talking about our, our future work programme, but I think because of the important nature of data, then I think it, it, uh, if you need a recommendation, I would recommend that this committee, by the executive, seek support to allow us to get access to and coordinate the information that to uh, have the earliest opportunity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got that, Josh. So yes. if the words, yeah, we'll do that. Um, fine. I've got online, we've got um, Mandy, and then we've got um, other way around, Christine. Christine, Christine, Christine oh. Lawrence, sorry, um, and then Mandy. So, Christine. Yes, I just can you just remind me now what is the price for a sixteen-year-old going out from the slipway in Minehead in a kayak? What do you charge now? What's that got to do with the work program? <laughs> no, um, I don't. I, I, to be honest with you, I can't tell you off the top of my head. But I have uh, they're online, so you can you can. 
you can see it there. The, yeah, there isn't a board up now, is there, with it on clearly at Minehead Harbour? Or, or has that been there, put there? There is no, I think it is £16 for the slipway fee, but for the kayak, it's. It, I think it's less than that because the, yes. it's like a kayak permit. This seems to be where the thing, which is the same as, as I say, in the report, you'll see that we've reduced for the for the sports uh, for the sports club, they they were given a twenty pound. Essentially, it was a kayak permit, which allowed them unlimited use for three hundred and sixty five days of the year, if they so choose. So it's um, and and there is a daily um, daily charge for launching tenders or yachts um, in relation to that. And I think the kayak, the daily one, if I remember correctly, was ten pounds. But it's um, that is in line with some of the other municipal courts that I looked at. Um, That's the age group we seem to have lost, is the teenage boys. Yeah, I, there's usually more boys than girls, to be honest, but not, not that it matters. Um, but that seems to be what we've lost. And I think that's just the thing that, well, Mandy mentioned it. That's what we want our young people to be doing, really, is taking up these lovely activities. So uh, I'm just concerned. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Chair. I don't know if it'll help. I think it'd be really helpful to understand the fees and charges. And I think it'd also be really helpful and help the dialogue that you've had today around what things cost um, and everybody understanding that fully. Um, from experience, fees and charges, bringing them forward from all the previous districts is quite challenging. So I think they all had different lines in the budget. So yeah. I think that that will be a challenge. But I think going forward, you know, knowing what amount you are aiming for and how far you are achieving that or not, um, I think that'd be really helpful for the board to understand it. And I think it'd be really helpful to have it in the public domain as well. So I think it will serve two purposes. My only question for you, Chair, is you will only have one meeting um, between now and when the budget actually goes to executive and full council um, so it's been quite clear um, what you want to have presented at that meeting because you won't if you like have another opportunity before the budget goes through. Thank you for that Mandy because obviously it's got to the 28th of October obviously we don't do the final budget set until February March. Um, It'll start to go to executive December yeah. and then it ends December. up full council in Feb. Yeah. yeah. So what I think we need, Mandy, is we need, if we're looking at the budget for the harbours, we obviously need to know the fees and charges because that's an integral, that's an integral part of your income stream. So I think we need to have that. So when we have our next meeting, I think we'll we'll have site the fees and charges. I know it's a doc, I think you can get access to it. I think we had it last year when we did the budget. They had all they had every line for every every uh, licensing services for the council to do. It was quite a hefty document. So the, the figures are there, but I think we need ours for the uh, Harbour Authority in October. And also we need to look at it in terms of, the, if we look at budgets, we obviously need to know the income, obviously we need to know the expenditure as well. So I, I'm hoping, well, we should be having all that for our next meeting. So hopefully we can then drill down into it. Fabulous, thank you, Chair. Yeah, so, and I've got, I've got, um, Rosemary first, and then I've got, or is it Mark? Sorry, it might yeah, be well, Rosemary. Rosemary, yeah. I, I just wanted to make the point that um, in Rochard, the, the, the scouts who run a lot of the, the, the sea scouts who run a lot of the activity and the town council have a very good relationship. So we don't seem to have lost the youngsters who would want to use the water. Not in the same way. I'm sure there's odd ones, but um, yeah, that we use it used to fishing. But... Yeah. I, I just want to also say that actually the Sea Scouts have a good working relationship with the Harbour Authority as well. Um, I don't honestly, I, I'm not going to dispute what's being said. I just, I think it may just be there has been a downturn in many ports in relation to recreational activity, mm -hmm. because you had such a spike with COVID where, and, and just after COVID where people did, um, you know, obviously we're very happy to, we'd like to get lots of people back. We've had people swimming and we do have, have had a couple of people out on the water sailing as well um, in Minehead. Um, my understanding is that the um, water sports club, I'm told, have gone down towards the golf club 
because they are unhappy with uh, the thing. So they, they, you know, they have taken their business away from there um, rather than trying to find a natural solution for it, despite our best efforts. So um, I appreciate that we need to encourage the youth back. That's absolutely that's that's it. And and uh, we had somebody suggesting a crab race and getting back the regattas that used to be run in both Minehead and watch it. And that can only be a positive thing. Now, that's coming from the users of the harbour. And I would dearly love to do it. But um, that requires a little bit more um, support and ability to run it. Because obviously all of these comes with certain assessments that have to be made. Thank you, so. Jess. Um, Marcus. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it's interesting you mentioned our license increase and bits, of course, that to be a cost. Um, and of course, we buy a cost neutral, but of course, if you were brought into maintenance and things like that, nobody could afford to do anything. Um, but what I would say is on what oh, Council um, was said earlier, I'm not going to name anyone, um, but with regards to the fees and charges, it would be nice to know, have some sort of report and come up with some sort of way of putting an item in the agenda that could come up with a policy procedure for when we need to raise charges. Are we looking at raising charges? Because I didn't know about it until I started getting emails. Now, whether that's me not paying attention, not being as engaged as I should have been, um, there's certain things that, you know, and I don't know whether we look at how that works or whether yeah. we should have already, and I just haven't been paying attention. Yeah, it was it was in a big document we had at full council. <laughs> I think it was like on page 600 and something, was it? So it was hidden. I mean, this, I mean, if someone was to ask me on a political level, I'd had a phone call from someone. They think you're doing this in my head. I wouldn't be going. You're doing what? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you don't want to think about that bit. And it's just that's on a political level, rather well, than the fact of we yeah. need to charge fees and so yeah. So just how we can, you know, you know we've obviously got you know, quite a bit of unrest. And I think we at least need to have a discussion, a discussion of that, and without without the harbour master taking all the flat. Yes, we do want. Well, it's. Um, I'm just going to respond to that so that that everybody can hear where coming from. I don't, you know. I don't have a problem with people being unhappy. What I do have a problem with is when people are actually not putting out what I know is actually what we've done and the truth that's out there. Um, you know, people are, don't enjoy it. I've, I've lived and worked around small ports and harbours and nobody likes change. But there is ways and means of doing it. And, uh, you know, I've had people uh, writing to me um, telling me that, you know, harbours inherently dangerous. Um, I, you know, so so there is a level at which um, everybody feels that they own the harbour. However, they will also quite often be the same people that will come and complain when the facilities or or somebody gets hurt within the harbour. Um, but they don't want to allow the changes that might improve the harbour to make sure it is safe and future proof for the younger generation and for the current users as well. So. Um, I appreciate that it's 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 a bit of a thorny issue, and it thus has it ever been for almost any port or harbour that operates. There is also a fine balance between commercial and 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 uh, the leisure users. We we have a reasonably, I think, good um, commercial fishing sector down there, despite some of the um, comments from Mr. Dyer. Um, and uh, you know, we certainly do have people looking to come and utilize the harbor but sometimes they don't you know we can only provide the facilities it is an operational harbor not a marina which has different requirements um, and i think people need to understand that sometimes this takes longer than we would like as well as they would like so we need a little bit of tolerance and patience in how we actually execute it thank you did we say about the work program about we wanted to um, make an update to do about watch it and sense it? We said we'll do a pre, we'll do probably a meeting before we we'll do, we'll do that before. No, we won't do it. We won't put it on the work program. So we'll, we'll sort it out before then. That makes sense. I know that Rosemary and Marcus were keen, so we'll, we'll, I'll sort that out as, as, a, as a meeting in between. Okay, well, I think we're better. Is there anything else that people would like to add on to work from? Obviously, we will have the standing items, I believe, like, for example, um, we'll have, uh, let's have a look next time. We'll have, obviously, have your update next time. Um, stakeholder forum meeting, if there's anything in between. Um, 
So, so the next week, we're going to be probably more to do about the, the finances and the um, fees and charges and, and looking at the budgets going forward. Okay, we want that right. Sure. Yeah, and I'm just looking at the, the work programme. 20th of April 2024, there was an annual report. Is that 24 or 25? That's 24. That, that'll be, oh, that'll be 25, so I call well spotted. Okay, next yes, question then. Yeah, yeah be um, Is it possible, um, have these been done in the past? Uh, no. No, no, because no, there's right, so, so, so there's no report that we can refer back to. No, because when I was okay, shared, shared before, we didn't, there was no annual report. Okay, thank you. No. No, so I can try and give you as much information as you can in relation to the background for each of the ports um, yes. as, as you request. Chair, what it might be worth doing is trying to collect the online minutes from previous councils and bringing them into one place. That yeah. might help generate. I think they're there actually. There That's, are some of them that yeah, are there. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are some in particular to, I think, uh, the Watch at Harbour Advisory Board, because that's obviously a legal requirement. Um, in relation to any stakeholder ones um, in Minehead, um, I don't believe there are. I've never seen any it's particularly. Say, no, no, the, 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 yeah, the previous case. Yeah, the Somerset West and Taunton Council ones are there. Yeah, I think, I think seen, they are. They, they, okay. I've seen them, but I don't know about the Bridgewater one. Um, oh, I think there are said, some for Sedgemoor as well, but um, I think it's. Because I think when we do the website, yeah. we can do it properly because we can yeah. structure yeah. it so everything will be clear as much. Um, it when, is, um, you know. The, the the website sort of operates, but I wouldn't say it's the most no. um, easy one to navigate around currently. So okay. it requires a bit. Thank you. Right. If there's nothing else, I shall close the meeting. I thank everyone for coming today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.